And uh, the idea of the indicator is that you open the chart, you apply a Shimoku indicator to your chart, and with one side at this indicator, you kind of see what is happening at the market and understand all you need to understand. The idea really is beautiful, in my opinion. And as you can see here, uh, part of the chart which contains the Ishimoku indicator with all of its lines, uh, we can see that this indicator does resemble a complete trading system. Uh, firstly, by the fact that it has um, many lines, which, uh, well, obviously means something. Um, to the first, uh, if you um, see the Shimoku indicator for the first time, it may seem that it is uh, really complicated. However, the reality is not so. And the most complicated part of this indicator uh, relates uh, to the Japanese names, which are a bit hard to pronounce, but uh, even um, after some time, you get used to that and simply use it without any problems. Um, you can change uh, settings of um, color scheme for this indicator so that the lines are not uh, that visible to change the opacity of some lines just to um, for, for it to look better, but that is up to you. Today we will uh, make sure that we understand all the elements of the indicator, the signals which can be um, got from the indicator and uh, the optimal settings of uh, the Shimoku indicator for particular time frames. This is our goal. So uh, there are four main elements of the indicator. And uh, here in the table, you can see um, the image of these elements, the description, and the names, uh, Japanese names and translations. I usually go by Japanese names, but well, we can um, use that translations today for the sake of simplicity. So uh, when we speak uh, about Ishimoku, we say Ishimoku cloud. The cloud is the main element of this indicator. And basically, uh, we understand um, by the cloud the space between two moving averages. Um, then the moving average with the smaller period is above the moving average with bigger period. This cloud has, well, what is called a bullish color uh, in the example we have here, which is taken from trading view. Uh, it is green, bullish, logical. Then the moving average with bigger period is above the moving average with smaller period. The Shimoku cloud is red, so it is bearish. Um, all other elements, um, of the indicator, at least uh, baseline and the turning line, the next two elements, are also based on moving averages. So um, it is not a rare thing that indicators have moving averages as basis. And well, Ishimoku is not an exception. So um, naturally, Ishimoku cloud, due to the fact that it relates to moving averages, kind of follows the price action. So uh, here I also have the information that the lines of the cloud, the two moving averages have different names, uh, Senko span A for the short term moving average and Senko span B for a moving average with bigger period. So just for us to understand that. And um, there is another special thing about the moving averages which form the cloud. They are kind of moved forwards. We will see that uh, when we look at the price chart a bit later. So uh, just moving averages together switched forwards. Um, next thing, uh, next lines are the baseline and the turning lines. And once again, these are two moving averages with uh, different periods. 
One is the longer term moving average, the baseline. And well, it is logical that we call base uh, line something which has a bigger period. And the turning line, uh, because of the smaller period, this line kind of revolves around the baseline. And um, as always with moving averages, then the moving average with a smaller period gets above the moving average with bigger period, it is a positive signal. And when the opposite thing happens, naturally, it is a negative signal. These two lines are not uh, shifted anywhere. They um, are situated where they should be. So they are kind of in the present um, time segment for the price action. And there is also the line number four uh, called the lagging line. And uh, its name suggests that it indeed is uh, falling behind the price chart and it is not a moving average it is simply price action so the line of the price which is shifted backwards uh, by some number of periods 26 in the classic settings of the indicator so it is shifted um, in the opposite direction to the Ishimoku cloud so returning to the picture here we can see the price chart, which is formed by the Japanese candlesticks. Uh, we can also see here the Ishimoku cloud, which is below the price chart. And it is kind of in front of the price chart. So moving averages shifted forwards from uh, the particular level of the price. And uh, we see the brown line, the blue line here, which follow the price rather closely. The two lines, the baseline and the turning line, just the simple moving averages here. And the line, the green line, which is the price action, shifted backwards. As a result, when we look at this indicator, we kind of see three layers the layer let's say number one the price section and turning line this is the baseline the system of moving averages the lines which are shifted forwards the ishimo cloud itself and uh, the third layer the price section the legging line which is shifted backwards and uh, we can kind of assume that these three layers represent the present, uh, the future, and the past situations. All of these layers, um, they can uh, give us a lot of hints about price action, and um, they can um, show us the trends, they can show us levels of support and resistance, and these uh, three layers interact between each other, and this interaction produces um, entry signals according to the Shimoku indicator. Let's uh, get to it and see how it all works. So let me remove this thing from here quickly enough, I hope. If you have any questions about the indicator, please don't hesitate to ask them. So we have talked about the lines and I hope that they will sink in. In the meantime, um, a couple of words about identifying trend with the help of this indicator. Um, everything is rather simple and visually understandable. If there is an uptrend at the market, like here at the picture we see on the left, the Ishimoku cloud is below the price chart. It is usually having uh, the bullish color and it is acting as support. So um, we clearly see that, well, the cloud supports it has a bullish bias, so we can say that it is an uptrend. Other lines of the indicator 
naturally have bullish bias as well. Um, all lines, and it's natural that they have the same direction in most of the times because they all derive from the price. So mm, the information is coming from the price. There is no extra intelligence here. So they move in one direction. Also, we may see the situation like the picture on the right. Then uh, we can't say that um, the cloud is below or above the price. Uh, the price moves kind of inside the cloud and all the lines. Uh, they are more or less horizontal. The cloud changes its color from uh, bearish to bullish and vice versa. And the cloud is relatively thin. These are all the characteristics of the range the sideways trend, as it is sometimes called. Uh, it means that uh, we do not have uh, this directional movement of the market to the upside or to the downside. We see that picture and, well, we decide whether we want to trade in a range or we uh, will wait for the situation of some clear directional movement. If we want to trade using the signals of Ishimoku indicator, well, uh, in this case, uh, we will have to wait for uh, the market to start trending up or trending down because for range trading, um, the Ishimoku indicator is not really good like many other indicators. Um, I guess that's because it is based on moving averages and moving average is a trend indicator. So this is the explanation. So you can see that we can identify trend. And of course, if it is a downtrend, we will see that the price is below the Ishimoku cloud and the cloud has a bearish red color. The lines are going down. Um, of course, we see that there are a lot of elements here, a lot of lines, a lot of colors, and it is necessary to just focus your attention on uh, some particular things. The most important things are the position of the current price versus the cloud, the position of lines um, Tenkan and Kijun, or in other words, the turning line and the baseline versus the cloud and the color of the cloud. So uh, what uh, is meant here? First, the position of the current price versus the cloud. And probably I think that we can have a look at some live chart. Just a moment, I'll switch it on. I will need to share my screen for that purpose. I think that it will be easier to explain everything if we get some chart. One second. So the screen should appear. I think and here is the example of a chart. So um, we see that um, the Shimoku cloud is switched forwards and um, we when we say that we look at the position of the current price relative to the cloud, we have a look at the cloud, which is, well, at the same line with the current price, at the same uh, time level. If we are now above 
the Ishimoku cloud, the situation is regarded as, well, more or less positive for the price. If we are below the um, cloud, it is regarded as negative. Um, another thing we need to watch is uh, the position of the lines, um, the turning line and the baseline. As we have already mentioned, when the price is above these lines and the lines are in bullish position, in this case we have um, the blue line for the turning line, the conversion line, it is sometimes called, maybe we can make it brighter. Yeah, I think this is the way. Here. Okay, yeah. So the price is um, above the line. The lines are here. The situation is considered to be more or less positive. However, we also need to pay attention to the bias of the line. Then the bias turns horizontal, then the lines start to decline. It is certainly a negative sign. Uh, as signals, we can read the situation when the price breaks above uh, the baseline, the brown line here. So we get above this line, the signal is positive. The picture, the part here is surely not maybe the best part for analyzing the signals of the turning line and the baseline, because we get this um, trendless uh, situation relative to the size of the time frame. Um, here, when we have a more or less established trend, uh, the advance of the market above the baseline is a bullish signal, which is confirmed by the bullish cloud. The cloud itself can act as support and resistance for the price. And you can see uh, here it acted as support. And uh, on the other hand, the situations when the price breaks and closes below the uh, cloud uh, mean that the market has broken a serious support level and a significant movement to the downside will likely follow. What else can we say about the indicator? I want to I want you to have a look at the list once more the color of the cloud, we have mentioned that. And um, for the reference, um, you can try to maybe print screen the information or have a look at it as um, the video will be released after the webinar. Here, I try to put in all the various signal. So uh, firstly, we have the turning line and the baseline. They can form crosses the bullish cross, the bearish cross, they can, uh, the price can cr cross the baseline and um, to the upside it is a bullish signal, to the downside a bearish signal. The cloud itself can switch from the bearish to the bullish position and vice versa. Uh, the price can cl cross the cloud, so we can see that all elements can interact with each other. And also there are signals which are related to the lagging line, which is switched backwards. It can uh, cross the price bottom up and it can um, go uh, too far from the price. The divergence will mean that the market will want to return to the um, more natural state than it is closer to the current price. So, Returning to the charts, what can we pick here? Maybe S&P 500, for example. So 
we can have. Different time frames, for example, the daily time frame. Here, I will try to pick the situation where it will be easier to explain how the situation goes. So all the lines of the indicator are here. Naturally, they appear just as you uh, apply the indicator. All the lines uh, appear at your chart. And imagine that we are here. We see that the cloud is bullish. We see that the lines of the indicator are in bullish position and providing support for the prices. The lagging line is above the price. It is also a signal of the movement to the upside. Then suddenly all these lines start to give us a bearish message. This uh, bearish message um, appears more or less at the same time. Um, firstly, we see that the price tests the support of the turning line. It is the closest to the price. Then the price gets below the brown line, the baseline. This is a rather serious uh, bearish signal. We can see that earlier the price stayed above the brown line during this period. The price next approaches to the next support formed by the Ishimoku cloud. It then drops to the lower border of the Ishimoku cloud. Usually it is considered uh, the most likely scenario that if the price entered the cloud, it will likely get to the opposite border of the cloud. The price breaks below the cloud, it starts acting as resistance, and then the price proceeds down. Around the time when the price enters the cloud, we see that the bullish cloud, which is uh, switched forward, so we see that the price is, uh, the cloud is somewhere here, it gets um, narrow and switch its color to the bearish uh, mode. Around the same time happens the fact that the green line, the lagging line, crosses the price action to the downside. And it is the confirmation that uh, the trend is changing to the negative uh, mode. If uh, we should make sure that uh, the price has crossed a candlestick, and then down, the leg line crossed the candlestick and then down. And this is a negative signal. So uh, we gather all these clues. They will definitely follow each other if the price is getting down. And um, we can use this information as a signal that indeed a major change of the trend to the downside took place. So the earliest thing we get is the price going down, going below the uh, baseline, the brown line here. And it is considered that if we have the price uh, cross below the baseline above the cloud, the signal is um, not so strong. However, most times it happens like this, that we get the sell signal above the cloud. If we got the signal like that when the price was below the cloud, it would consider it to be the strong sell signal. Sometimes that happens inside the cloud. Um, the lines of the indicator, the turning line may go below the baseline inside the cloud or below the cloud. And in this case, the sell signal will be stronger. Also, uh, when we analyze the Ishimoku indicator, we can have a look at the situations. Then, for example, uh, like this, the green legging line, which is a price action, the distance between the line and the price becomes rather big in comparison to other uh, moments we see on the chart. So we can see here a big distance. And as a result, there is the big distance between the price and the cloud as well. Naturally, the price is not able to uh, get too far from the cloud. And then situations, divergences like this happen. It is a sign that probably a correction, a movement closer to the cloud and to the lights of the indicator will follow. 
So you can see that uh, the price is kind of revolving around the cloud and um, returning to the cloud at some point. This is the current situation in S&P 500 on the daily chart here. We see that there was a significant bullish um, movement, bullish trend. The Ishimoku cloud, you can see the bullish one was rather wide. However, it started to get narrower here. Uh, the lines start to be more horizontal. If we see further bearish developments here, the lower border of the cloud will likely stay horizontal, while the upper border will go to the downside. And in some time, the Ishimoku cloud will switch color to the red one. So far, that didn't happen, and we still see a bullish trend here. We expect that the price will get support at the baseline of the indicator. And if this line is broken, the next support and rather strong support, given the fact that the cloud is rather wide, will be at the upper border of the cloud. Uh, if the price breaks below the cloud, likely we will have the change of the trend to the downside. That will be accompanied by the movement of the green line through the price chart to the downside and the movement of the blue line below the green line. What other charts can we look at? Maybe maybe something here. Many uh, stocks, if we speak about stocks, have this kind of uh, similar situation, the recent um, bullish movement. Here we saw the positive signals uh, is now at the stop. If we switch time frames, we will see that naturally the position of the cloud and the lines will change because, well, different time frame, different uh, position of moving averages. And here, of course, we will see uh, the sell signals earlier if the price gets to the downside, then um, we will do so at a daily time frame. Here we can see that the turning line gets above the baseline and vice versa, signaling the periods of trend moves and the correction moves. It is now um, necessary to mention the settings of the Ishimoku indicator for uh, different timeframes. And well, here there are some recommendations. Um, Classically, the settings uh, which were proposed by the person who has created the indicator, they were 926.52. So as the settings for the indicator, we get three numbers. And actually, you can pick the numbers uh, you like. The key idea is for the indicator to work correctly. The numbers should be in increasing order. So 9, 26, 52. 9 is the parameter for the turning line. Uh, 26 for the uh, baseline. And 52 relates to the cloud. So um, the numbers should be increasing. This numbers particular set was um, related to the fact that back then, um, as the indicator comes from Japan, there was a six-day uh, work week, so from Monday to Saturday, and nine was uh, one work week and a half. Twenty-six was um, so um, it was um, the number of uh, work days in a month, and fifty-two. Um, if I'm not mistaken, in two months, something like that. So the idea is that it was related to calendar and to the work week, to the um, days then uh, the market was in the mode of trading and not closed. 
Um, so now this uh, sayings are considered to be the best for some bigger time frames, uh, like uh, weekly time frame. As well, there are 52 weeks in a year, so that is the logic here. Uh, for the daily time frame nowadays, it is sometimes recommended to use um, the modified set of parameters 822.42. Well, uh, now we have a work week which has five days, so uh, a week and a half is about eight days. And well, um, other parameters are well also um, adjusted for. The hourly time frame, we get this um, reading, so um, nine hours, uh, 24 hours a day, and that reading doubled. And for uh, smaller time frames, this kind of uh, parameters, um, I guess 60 minutes in an hour, uh, is introduced. Um, it is possible to use the classic settings of 926.52 at all time frames. And if you try to experiment and to change the settings and see how the indicator changes, well, um, I would say that it won't change dramatically. Uh, the lines will shift somewhat, and in um, some cases, uh, the settings which are modified will make the indicator a bit more precise, it will react sooner to the changes in price action. So if you focus on trading with Shimoku and use it in particular for identifying entry and exit points, uh, I guess there is some sense in uh, trying to apply these settings. Also, I have some recommendations for uh, four-hour charts um, for um, one hour and four hour charts here. Mm -hmm. uh, these are recommendations uh, by different authors and any kind of them can be tested. Um, in particular, I think that uh, here the recommendations yeah, for short term intervals may be interesting. As well, as for me, I um, use it use Ishimoku indicator pretty often. Um, at some point, um, I started feeling the chart uh, too bare unless there was an Ishimoku cloud um, applied to that. Um, in most cases, I um, didn't pay much attention to the uh, turning line and the baseline. I looked at the cloud just to get the sense of the market and it was convenient that the cloud is shifted forwards so that it uh, didn't uh, overlap the price but showed the moving averages and the things they uh, characterize how they characterize the market um, i think that um, the ishimoku indicator works best uh, and is better used on bigger time frames uh, like daily charts and um, weekly charts. A weekly chart especially can produce good signals. Um, in particular, it is um, rather good to consult weekly Ishimoku cloud during the uh, weekend. Then we have the weekly candlestick for the past week already uh, fixed and closed. And we can uh, estimate the signals of the cloud, see whether the price may be closed below the cloud, maybe there was some kind of stick pattern uh, near the borders of the cloud. And uh, that uh, provides some uh, um, good signals and solutions. Daily chart also works um, rather fine, especially if um, the market is trending. As for short-term time frames, well, I don't have much experience with using Ishimoku for um, scalping time frames. So you 
you should practice that on yourself. But well, mm, my belief is that still it is better to practice it on bigger time frames. So um, these are the parameters. And um, I see that question here about the exit and entry points. So um, you can see that the indicator is rather complex. So you can uh, you can have um, various strategies which are related to the indicator. Uh, basically, uh, the, one of the most evident solutions is to make sure that the market is in trend and uh, enter the market on the prices uh, testing and then returning above the baseline. That is regarded as an entry point um, as for the stop loss order that may be related to your risk management strategy, to the previous highs and lows, um, to the reasonable uh, distance in pips uh, below the previous low of the price chart. Um, I wouldn't um, tie stop loss to the cloud itself. So, um, as for take profit levels, uh, we can set the situation here based once again on the intersection of the baseline in the opposite direction or on the previous highs and lows we see on the chart, so related to price action. The um, other elements of uh, the Ishimoku indicator, like the cloud itself, uh, like um, the green lending line, they are, um, in my opinion, the supporting elements which uh, show us that the setup for trading is favorable and we can look for the signals which imply the price uh, crossing uh, the moving averages. Some traders prefer uh, the crossing of the turning line and the baseline as the entry signal. Um, that is another variant, but I favor the situations that the price gets um, interaction with the baseline as the hint to trade because the turning line is too volatile in my opinion and it can change uh, too much here. So, um, You can also, of course, uh, add some other indicators to uh, the chart which contains Ishimoku, or uh, as I have mentioned, have a look only at some elements uh, um, of the indicator for the hints. That is um, up to you. I think that the best thing which is uh, combined with the Ishimoku indicator is the analysis of um, Japanese candlesticks, maybe because these are both Japanese techniques and um, I think that logically they work rather fine together, the price action and its uh, logic which is reflected in candlesticks and uh, the power of moving averages which is represented in form of the Shimoku cloud when we get this single idea of that trend following indicator and uh, see that it is um, kind of split in three elements showing us the future, the present and uh, the past periods of the price chart. So this I think makes the indicator kind of unique and um, we can look at it this way that it shows us three periods and um, see how the price interacts with the cloud, uh, how the cloud is showing us the future, uh, how the price is interacting with the turning line and the baseline, and whether the previous projection of the price 
is um, getting uh, recoils up from the price chart and continues the uptrend, or it goes through the price chart to the downside, signaling that indeed this is a major reversal of the price. So this is my um, summary about the Ishimoku indicator. I would like to remind you the fact that Tradimo has a premium program with um, the various features, including live webinars and personalized learning support. And if you are interested, please have a look at learntradingmo.com slash premium so that um, you may see more information about that. And um, in the meantime, I advise you to check Shimoku indicator in work to experiment with the parameters and um, maybe try to integrate it in your trading system or just um, use it for um, the consulting purposes to have a look at the chart one glance as it is uh, presumed by the name of the indicator and see whether you see and consider the setup which exists at the market as interesting and worth um, trying to make a uh, trade and um, getting some trade ideas from the chart. So thank you everyone for um, attention today. Um, it was a pleasure. And I hope you to see you at the next webinars. There will be more topics related to technical analysis and maybe some fundamental stuff as well. Thank you for your attention. I wish you all the best in your trading practices. And I will be here for you at further webinars to answer your questions. So bye-bye and have a nice evening.